The Neighborhood Empowerment Network is a very simple concept. We actually work to develop tools and resources and strategic partnerships for residents and stakeholder organizations to leverage as they work to make their neighborhoods safer, healthier, cleaner, inclusive, and more resilient places to live and work. It's a very simple idea. Well, we build both on-demand and proactive capacity building initiatives. Specifically, we have a social media initiative, Empower SF. If you haven't been there, please come check it out. Sign up for our newsletter, read the blogs. We also do events and trainings. We did the Clean and Green Summit um, in the mission. And then lastly are the strategic channel and partnerships that we're developing right now. But this is really the focus of what the NEN's trying to accomplish. Um, in our key media solution side, we have Empower SF. We have our newsletter with over 4,000 people getting um, that information. Adam Greenfield does an amazing job running our Facebook page. We have NEN TV. We're working on developing a NEN Capacity College. And we're actually starting our own radio station as well. Um, we want to start putting more content online in the form of podcasts. Um, events and trainings, again, I mentioned earlier, we had our Community Earth Hour celebration this year, the Cleaning Green Summit. And then, if you're anywhere in San Francisco, you want to be at City Hall for the NEN Awards. We had over 600 people come last year. It was an amazing event. Um, and it was an opportunity to celebrate really important things like Best Website or Come Back Neighborhood of the Year Award. It's important that we elevate these sort of things that sort of fall between the cracks that people don't take as being as important and remind people that they're very important to building resilient communities. Um, our channel partnerships, I think, are really exciting. First of all, the goals are simple. Leverage existing investments and capacity. NERT is doing a great job. We just need to help NERT be more successful in any way we can. That's the mission of the NEN. Do whatever we can to help you achieve your organizational goals, not try and duplicate and be redundant. Now lastly, the last one is this. This is the one I think is the game changer. This is the reason why I think uh, I'm very optimistic about the future. NEN University. NEN University was an idea that was submitted to us um, by Harvard University and their observations of what happened in New Orleans. Uh, anyone who uh, knows Tulane University in New Orleans will tell you that the tragedy of Tulane was the day after the hurricane when they looked out in the neighborhoods around their campus. Guess what? They didn't know really what to do because they had never done any service learning in New Orleans. Tulane University students usually traveled nationally and internationally to do service learning. They never did any work in their neighborhoods. And now when their neighborhoods needed them the most, they didn't know anybody in them. And so now you cannot graduate from Tulane University without doing service learning for at least one semester in New Orleans and in order for, to support its recovery. But we also learned from Harvard, who was sending students down to the Broadmoor community, that students can make a huge difference in the ability of a community to recover and, um, and advance on their recovery goals. And so the bottom line is, is that they've recommended that we start to work with the university community here in San Francisco to learn how to leverage their expertise to build relationships in neighborhoods today that could be repurposed after disaster in order to accelerate their recovery. The major project that we're working collaboratively with them on right now is called the Phoenix 2.0 Project. This is the proactive platform. So what we're doing is we're not going into communities and say, you, we want to help you prepare for a disaster. That's not what we're saying. We're saying, we want to help you succeed today. Because guess what? Almost in every community right now, there is some of a form of a disaster going on. Between the budget cuts and the economy, every community right now is stressed. We want to help them succeed. So we have three focus areas that we approach. We have a geographical approach, doing asset mapping, stakeholder interviews. And these are geographically deployed teams of students that are going to be working on, not on a semester basis, but for years to come identifying community goals, supporting community building infrastructure to implement those goals, and then helping support the implementation of those solutions. Socio-demographic, a very ambitious narrative th that we just started. This initiative is um, working with the LGBT community to start an honest conversation to say, is the LGBT community always going to have a major footprint in San Francisco? So the reality is that this community right now is feeling a lot of stress because they're experiencing the same challenges like everyone else is right now, housing costs, CBO service providing, economic pressure on small businesses. And there are a lot of people in the gay community right now who think if we don't holistically start to talk about how we're going to work together to keep a gay community city, we may end up having less of a footprint here than we think we should. So we've got a steering committee of 25 leaders in the community. We're interviewing them and we hopefully will build to having some sort of a community congress in the fall that's going to actively identify goals that they want to achieve and then work with them to support those goals and using our academic partners to do so as well. And then lastly, working with the police department, as I mentioned, a whole new approach of leveraging public safety to bring more people to the table, because we think that's a gateway issue to get people to move forward on disaster preparedness. But most neighborhood associations in the city started off as a neighborhood watch. So if our goal is to have active neighborhood associations, we need to start at the neighborhood watch level. 
But this is the goal of the Neighborhood Empowerment Network, and I really appreciate the opportunity to sort of finally be able to lay it all out for you. And I hope that uh, it was uh, informative and possibly a little inspiring.